Hello, adventurers. My name's Tyler. And I'm Richard. On today's episode, Richard is going to be creating his very first character for Daggerheart. That we'll be using in an upcoming home game. Hey. Welcome to True Strike. Howdy, folks, and welcome Howdy. back to the show. Howdy. Yeah, we're playing a game of Daggerheart. Yes. So we are going to give our uh, hand at testing out this new system. Yeah. And uh, we have a nice little group that has already made most of their characters. Well, they've started. They have all their ideas and everything like that they want to do. Everyone has a base idea of, like, species and class and stuff like that. Yeah. But no one's really started, like, filling out the paperwork. Yeah. But, see... What I do whenever there's a new home game is I let everybody else go first. Uh -huh. Cause every time. I, every single time I, cause I'm, I'm not trying to meta game or anything here, but I like to see the party composition to see if maybe there's just like somebody like a hole that's maybe there or just something that I might want to try that maybe wasn't my first choice, but could end up being kind of fun. Like, cause you know, I'm almost forcing myself to take a role kind of a situation. I don't know. It's weird. He's lay he's forgetting the or leaving out, I would say, actually. Uh the real truth here is that no matter what or who he wants to play, he takes a back seat, lets everyone else choose first, <laughs> and then he like swallows the sadness <laughs> of not getting to play the ribbit. I'm not gonna be the <laughs> ribbit in this campaign. <laughs> Thank you very much, because uh, our, you know, work associate has already claimed the ribbit. And then I'm not gonna get to be a fun grill either, because that one was already taken. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah, my top two ancestries out the window. But that's okay, because this is what I do every time. Right. Yeah. So, real quick, top of the show, giant shout out to Nathan Corzo4067. Thank you. We're only filming this because of you. <laughs> hey. Yeah, no, that's that's a good point. Yeah, that yep. was. We, these all were going to be characters we were going to create as we went. Right. So, we were going to come and sit down for the game and do like you're supposed to do. Um, but then that comment came up yeah. and, uh, I was like, how would you feel about making your character as an episode? And I was like, that sounds wonderful. Right. Let's turn our normal daily life into content. Yeah. Is it <laughs> going to be difficult? Absolutely. Because I have only the briefest thought of what this character is actually going to be. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause I had like three different ways I was going to go. And then, uh, everybody started, you know, naming off what they were going to be, the ancestries that they were choosing, uh, and the classes that they were choosing. So my, my field started to narrow and narrow and narrow. And then I've got three that were like still out there that I could play. And I was choosing between those three. And that's where we landed on the Seraph. Ah. Yeah. So I'm doing a Seraph uh, with this build. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and we're going to go through this. Um, we're going to do almost everything. So we won't be able to do um, a couple of things in here. Mostly the create connections part. Mm -hmm. So that is the final step where you're creating connections with your group. Which is fine because once we have everyone together and we're all like sitting down at the table together for the first time, we can discuss that as friends. Yes. Yeah. So we'll create those connections, but we're going to go through everything else yep. right now, um, which is going to be a lot of making stuff up on the fly. Yeah. And on the last episode, uh, I, I believe we agreed that it'd be faster to actually create a character than to talk about creating characters. Time to find out. Oh, it's time to find out. I, I, so I imagine this is probably going to take us longer than oh, it would take we'll you out. to make a character sitting at a table. And I'm going to say that because we do be rambling. We do be rambling. We do be it rambling. Yeah. Be the facts. And we're going to get to some of these choices where I'm probably going to bounce some ideas off you. And uh, we'll see what your opinions are on some of these things. This you is why we need a live chat. have some input. Could you imagine? Here. Oh, man. This would be amazing <laughs> if we had like a live chat going right now where people could help me build a character. <laughs> Instead of just me. That's what. Okay. So future episode. <laughs> we are going to make a character. I don't know which system it's going to be for. Maybe it'll be Dagger Heart again. Maybe it'll be 5e when oh, the yeah. new system comes out. Maybe we do a live episode where, like, if we have people in chat, they are, like, the main driving force behind the questions and the choices Ooh, made. Ooh, I love it. Yeah. So chat makes a character. We're going to put that down. Total record scratch. I meant to say this at the real top of the show <laughs> because we normally cover D&D. <laughs> Wizards, uh, they're going to be putting out uh, the book releases two weeks early. Oh, yes. At your friendly local game stores. Yeah. Pretty cool. That's really cool. So, uh, yeah, if you hadn't read that story yet, they basically made an announcement that said that 
they are really pushing for brick and mortar. Yep. Right. So you're going to be able to get the content that's is uh, original artwork as well as variant art books. Yep. Right. In your LGS, you know, early. Now, this is only for in-store, in-person pickup. Right. So there's no loopholes here about, like, ordering it to your LGS and having it shipped to your home and getting it earlier. You got to walk into yeah. your LGS <laughs> and get this, which I think is awesome. No, me too. Yeah, that's, that's it. Cool. No more D&D. No more D&D. Back to Dagger Heart. Yeah. All right. So let's get started on Shall character we? creation. Yeah. So you already mentioned you got your class figured out. Step one. So check. step one, check. We are going with Seraph, which yep. uh, I chose Seraph because um, the rest of our group, we don't really have any real healing going on, right? No, we've got, we've got what? We got a ranger. We got a ranger. Yep. We've got, um, oh, what is the, we have an unknown right now. Right. Well. Oh no, a bard. Bard. Yeah, bard. Never mind. So we have a ranger, a bard, bard and a rogue. And a rogue. That's yeah. what it was because the bard wanted to be a rogue. Yes. <laughs> And but is now going to be a rogue. Was already a rogue. Yeah. So rogue is already a rogue. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so yeah, I chose to go with Seraph because um, I think that some healing could be kind of fun, as well as maybe some uh, swinging of some swords and stuff like that. So we're gonna we're gonna go with Seraph as my class choice. Wait, here for it. All right. So now subclass. Yeah. We have two options here, um, and that is I've got Winged Sentinel and mm -hmm. Divine Wielder. So, so read, read me through them. We're gonna go over these. Wing Sentinel is a spell cast modifier of strength, right? Um, these are uh, the two different subclasses. You spend a hope to take flight until your next roll with fear. While flying, you do an additional 1d8 damage to any weapon attack you make. You may spend an additional hope to pick up and carry another creature that is approximately your size or smaller. That's it. So flight as an option. I love the strength is spell casting modifier. Yeah, that's, that's that's interesting. So neat. And then you cast it Ooh. and then you have flight until you roll with fear. Until you roll with fear. Which could be immediately. It could be very soon. Oh yeah, that could be very soon. Or this quick. could last yeah. for it. Or a long time. Yeah. yeah. And you also get a damage buff. This is really interesting. And mm -hmm. I I honestly don't know which one I'm going to choose yet. In that Daggerheart's not afraid to introduce flight right off the get-go. Oh, right off the get-go. Yeah. yeah, you're flying level one straight up if yeah. you choose that. There's no, it's not just banning Eric Coker because your DM doesn't <laughs> want to deal with flight. Oh, I said no D&D. &D. It's, it's always going to come back. There's always going to come back. That's in my heart. Uh, the next thing we have is the Divine Wielder. Uh, so this one has two different abilities. The first one is Spirit Weapon. And when you have a melee weapon equipped, it can fly from your hand and strike an enemy and then return to you. Treat it as though it's a weapon with uh, close range. Um, you can mark a stress and apply this attack roll to another target in range with the same so cool. attack roll. So this is really cool. You're throwing your weapon around and bouncing it. Yeah. And then it comes back to you. The next thing you have on here is sparing touch. Once per long rest, you can touch a creature and heal two points or two stress. Sick. That is a lot. Uh-huh. So my options here are flying with extra damage right off the jump mm -hmm. or healing stress or hit points which mm -hmm. is big and being able to throw my weapon and hit two targets yep this one is tough because thematically with my character i already have the visual of how the flight works like it's it's in my brain pan and it looks beautiful and amazing and i love the mechanics of the flight and how it would work and how thematic it would be right um so i already have that idea mm -hmm. but the divine is leaning into the healing aspect of course, sure. Which I like a lot. Now, and I know you, you said you're trying to fill that hole, but don't feel pressured. I know. You have to be the healer I of the know. group. I, I, I'm trying not to feel pressured to be the healer of the group. So, however, how do you feel about your spiritual weapon, though? Oh, that is ignore really, the second really cool. Half, the, right? So, to me, this kind of almost makes up for it, mm -hmm. right? Because I'm hitting two different targets with an attack roll. If possibly. you take a stress. Yeah, if I take a stress. And then just being able to use a melee in close range, mm -hmm. right? So I could just throw whatever my and was weapon this, is out. Was this any weapon? Was the secondary weapon included? So Let's this is that. when you have a melee weapon equipped. Melee weapon. Yes. Okay. Melee weapon equipped. So because of all that, I think I'm going to give up Wing Sentinel. So we're not going to go with Wing. So I'm going to try to stay out of this too much other than a little bit of like commentary or if you ask an opinion. A shield is a melee weapon. <laughs> yes. Yes. A shield is a melee weapon, which means Captain America yep. is a thing. <laughs> is a thing here. So 
I'm going to go with Divine Wielder. So we're giving up flight. We're taking bouncing weapon. Okay. And we're taking a possible healing uh, or stress, which I think that's a really... I think it's really worth really it. Really worth it. Just right take there. stress. Being able to, to remove two stress, mm-hmm. right, just by touching somebody or just straight up heal two hit points. Yeah. That seems massive. So we are going with uh, Seraph main class Divine Wielder as our subclass. So was it take a stress and remove two? No, you don't take any stress. Oh, I totally missed. Once per I long rest, this. you okay. just get to lay on hands, which is essentially what this is. Right. Wink, wink. <gasps> is a lay on hands. You you yeah. touch somebody, you heal two stress, or you heal two Great. hit points straight up, no cost. So we're going with Divine Wielder as our uh, as our subclass. Love so it. I'm gonna go ahead and write that on my sheet here. So we got Seraph class with the Divine Wielder subclass. Yep. All right. We're already done with step number two, Richard. We're already done with that. We're so going on through. Heritage, though. So you already you already leaning one way? So Heritage, uh, I have a couple of different options for this uh this character build that I'm that I'm looking at. Mm-hmm. So we've got two parts to Heritage, right? So right. we have our community, yep, and we have our ancestry. Mm-hmm. So we'll go with uh, we'll go with ancestry first because that way I can explain my thematics for the wings that I just gave yes. up. I'm going with clank on here, which is not my first choice. If you were a ribbit, how are you going to do the flight? If I was a ribbit, alternate universe. Oh, ooh, I don't know if I would even have flight on the table as a ribbit. Okay, yeah, I don't think flight would have even it been would an have, option. It would have just yeah, been I would builder. have straight. Straight to Divine Wielder. Okay. Yeah, I would not have used Flight at all. <laughs> Throg. <laughs> Throg. <laughs> no, it totally works. But yeah, no. Um, Ribbit. So here's the other thing. If I went Ribbit, would I have actually been playing Seraph? I'm not even sure about that. Oh. Yeah, it's an interesting yes, you one. you would have. Mm, I don't know. You'd have been know. a monk, Seraph. <laughs> N- yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I wouldn't have done Flight. But I am a Clank. So right. with, with Flight with my Clank... My immediate thing was, oh, I'm taking flight because I'm going to have these gigantic, ornate, like Da Vinci style wings oh, I love it. that fold out of my back, right? That would look just super cool. Yeah. 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 And I loved it. And I had like, that was like, oh, yeah, I'm taking flight. No problem. We're, we're flying. I'm using these weird, <laughs> weird Da Vinci robotic wings. And it was going to look really, really cool. But Divine Wielder won out in the end. So why Clank? So Clank... um, I started to think about Seraph and then immediately my brain, when I'm creating a character automatically starts building a backstory for somebody. Right. So I started with an idea of who this character was and what his background was. And immediately out of all the species, Clank just fit so well really? in the okay. backstory that I started to just write automatically mm-hmm. in my head. So I'm going to read the ancestry card for you for Clank's. Uh, so clanks are uh, sentient mechanical beings built from such materials as metal, wood, stone, and clay to resemble humanoids, animals, or even inanimate objects. And this is really cool because if you look at some of the uh, the concept art for clanks, there's literally everything in there to look like right. walking cupboards to like centaurs. And Do you already know? Multi arms. Have and stuff yours like that. envisioned? Oh yeah, I can see them in my head already. Okay. Yeah. So their ancestry trait is called purposeful design. Decide who you were created by and for what purpose. When you generate your experiences at character creation, choose one that reflects this purpose and add a plus one to it. So Love that it. is going to come into play a little bit later. Yep. When we'll we're be talking revisiting about this card. our experiences, we'll revisit yeah. Clank. So Clank is my ancestry. Mm-hmm. And now we have to choose the community, right? So this community comes down to two different options. And I cannot tell you which one I am going to use yet. Oh. So we're going to look at both of these. Oh, so, wait, because you don't want to tell me or because you're undecided? Because I'm undecided. Okay, okay, okay. I was like, well, this is going to make an interesting character creation. <laughs> you're like, I can't tell you. <laughs> it's secret. So Turn off the cameras. It's interesting um, because Highborn is an interesting one, right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I, I like Highborn a lot. You got, so, you got some money. Being part of the highborn community means you were born into a life of elegance, opulence, and prestige within the upper echelons of society. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then you have orderborn. So orderborn is being mm. part of the orderborn community means you were raised in a place of great discipline or faith to uphold a set of principles that reflect your experience there. I see the angle you're going at with your character already. So we have these two options. Yeah. And 
I don't think you see it really. Really? Yes. Okay. okay. So in order for you to get a better idea on my, my thought process, I'm going to have to tell you the backstory of my character. <laughs> right off Custom the jump here. backstory. So the, the backstory of this character is he is a clank that was created to be personal guard, mm -hmm. assistant, as well as teacher to a royal family member. Okay. So a young royal family member that would eventually ascend to throne, right? Mm -hmm. So was his name Will Robinson? <laughs> the the royalty's name yet? Yeah. I have no idea what his name yet. We'll get there. <laughs> but my character, um, should I just go ahead and tell you his name now? Or oh, well, that's I mean, way hey, farther along, isn't it? You already have this in mind though. Yeah. So this is this is on thirteen. So we'll get to his name in a minute. Wow, saving it. We'll hold save it back. the name. We'll save the name. We'll hold it back. <laughs> you might change your mind. Um. So yes, this character is somebody who lives in a regal setting, right? So yeah. he is he's in living amongst royal family. So Highborn is kind of a an, an interpretation, right? Because he isn't royalty himself, right? But he, he is included that lifestyle. in that lifestyle. Yes. He grew up in that lifestyle. Whereas Orderborn also fits because being part of the Orderborn means you were raised in a place of great discipline, faith, and a, whole, a set of principles that reflect your life. I, which being a teacher, uh -huh. being an assistant, being somebody who is essentially serving a royal family member, both of these kind of fit. Which are you leaning more into? So it's funny so, because they both have descriptions mm -hmm. on, um, you know, the benefit that you get from these. Right. And I'm not even taking those into account. No, of really. course. No, no. That's not <laughs> I don't care about those. Here. No, yeah. I don't care about what those benefits are right it's not now. not about abilities. This is more the about story. the story. Yep. Yeah. So this is where I was kind of at an impasse. I'm not really sure. Highborn or orderborn. Question. Are you leaning more with this character into the royal family or the religious aspect? You being Seraph, I thought you were going to lean more religious. Yeah. So that's the thing is that like uh, the one of them is so orderborn is leaning more into faith. Right. Right. So, so you're a teacher of this child, right? Yes. Are you also teaching them about religion? Yes. So I would be teaching them the the core values mm -hmm. of the God that, you know, I choose to follow, essentially. So it's kind of like orderborn really does kind of go along with it because I am. I'm trying to instill these values right. in this child that I'm, you know, helping essentially raise and teach. That's what makes that makes more sense to me. Yeah. They're both very good fits though. They're both very good. Either fits. way you went, I think you're making a good choice. Yeah. That one to me personally, I think fits a little better. So I've been leading or leaning mm -hmm. borderborn. Okay. Right. So you kind of just push me over the edge there. So let's figure out what they actually do. Sure. <laughs> so Highborn uh, has inheritance, so you have advantage on any roles that you make when consorting with nobles, negotiating prices, or leveraging your reputation to get what you want. Take an extra handful of gold, the character creation. Okay, so that actually leans more towards being a royal, that ability. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yes, I think that actually doesn't make sense for your character. Doesn't make sense at all, right. at all. So that actually is, a. Uh, I think it's pretty good that we're... Maybe we should have looked at the abilities. Out. We should have looked at the abilities. <laughs> Who'd have thought abilities could actually affect your choices? Wow. All right, so let's see what Orderborn let's is. Let's see if this just ruins it entirely. <laughs> Dedicated. Okay, so this one is going to be a bit of a challenge for me because this is going to require me to come up with some stuff. Oh, perfect. Um, record three sayings or values <laughs> your upbringing instilled in you. Once per short rest, when you describe how you're embodying one of these principles through your current action... You may roll a d20 as your hope die instead of a d12. That's so that's pretty awesome. good. That is awesome. Once uh, per short rest. However, that means Whoa. I have to come up with three sayings or values that my upbringing has instilled in me. And you act like this is a challenge for you. This is a challenge because no. this is three. This is three. You'll have these by tomorrow. You're not going to have these during this recording, probably. You'll have these by tomorrow. Guaranteed. Mm. So... I have one of them automatically. There we go. <laughs> yeah, I have one of them automatically. So I'm going to have to come up with three of these. But um, I think one of them, uh, so three sayings or values uh, you were uppering that were instilled in you. Um, so my first one, and I'm going to write this down so I don't forget it later. Yeah, I'm going to no, give no. you one of these right now. And this saying is going to be something that was told to me by the mother of the child that mm -hmm. uh that i am raising and te 
teaching. So any, would any of these be ones that you came up with yourself or are these all ones that you were like told, instructed to so, go over and over again with this child? This would be something that would, uh, that would have been instilled in me. This to instill first in one. the child? No, to oh. this one, this one, the, front, the one just came to me, would yes. be something that would be instilled into me as my purpose. Okay. Right. And it's going to be, the word purpose is in there, which is uh, act swiftly and with purpose, always be on guard. Ooh, you can swing. I love that it's like, you have to explain when it wants for short rest, how this affects your decision uh, in the moment. That covers so many things. <laughs> is it too broad? <laughs> no, no, it's great. That's just the first thing that I, I thought I love it of. because you're like, hey, we're going to a co uh, combat. Guess what? I'm acting swiftly <laughs> and with purpose. And I'm like, gosh, dang it. You're right. <laughs> so I got to think of two more sayings that would have been instilled in me. Um, so I'm going to have to come up with those. If I think of any while we're in this, uh, grab I'm going to journal. Some, I'm going to grab the journal and we'll write it down. <laughs> love to it. Keep note of it. I love it. So we are an order born yep. clank. Oh, that's easy. That's so fun. And I love that with this system, being able to take an ancestry and communication card, you can, and you already came in this with a little bit of an idea. But just like funneling your idea through these cards, it, it there was an obvious path once you really started going through them. Yeah, no, once I started going through, it was kind of, yeah, it kind of stuff starts to make yeah. sense. Yeah, I like All it. All right. Now, my favorite part. All right. <laughs> just because it's so simple. You get to set up your uh, traits and evasion. Yeah. So you've already got these values. I'm not sure if you've already, nope, we're going to sign them right now. So yep, you're going to have gonna sign a, them right now. We're looking at one single negative one, two zeros two positive ones and one plus two. Okay. So what do you want to be your dump? <laughs> My dump stat. Yeah. Cause that's going to have to be a negative one, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So hmm. it should be your only negative. Unless you have any armor or weapons or anything that tank anything else. Yeah. This is an interesting one now because of your, uh, ability stuff earlier with your subclass, uh, I believe strength is your spellcasting modifier, correct? Yes, yeah, okay. strength would be my my modifier mm -hmm. there. Um do you think down the line when you picture this character? Mm -hmm. Swift, thin, dexterous, or do you think you're going to be more armor plated and things like that? Cuz we got to start kind of working towards this now a little bit. Yeah, we do have to start working cuz I have some options to I'm going to have to start thinking about armor very yeah. very soon here and it's whether or not I want to just completely dump everything because if I start thinking about like whether or not I want to be full plate Right. I'm automatically going to take a hit to agility. Uh huh. Right. And that's going to be rough on me. Yeah. Your evasion. Could um, be... Yeah. Oof. The, the evasion is going to disappear completely. Yes. <laughs> um, and then it's just not going to be, not going to be a good time. Um, I think that what we're going to go here. So as far as dumps are considered, um, I really, I think that perception, sense and navigation, um, and presence for charm per, uh, performance and deception. These are all things that I don't think I would dump. I think, honestly, my dump would probably be finesse. Really? Yeah. Don't the, see yourself so very... The control, hide, and tanker. Dexter, so to speak. <laughs> so, well, agility, I mean, right, is right. a little bit more... Finesse I think there's a difference between hands. finesse and agility. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I think finesse... Yeah, I, when I think finesse, I'm thinking more like handwork, like tinkering, like it says on here, mm -hmm, or, mm -hmm. or trying to, like, hide in, you know... Something like that. Right. But so there, I think, there are some finesse based weapons. Like, I think so there are we'll some finesse based road, weapons, but... which I'm not gonna use. Okay. Uh so we're gonna we're gonna put my negative one in right finesse. finesse. Yeah, okay. we're gonna go into finesse. Um so we got the dump right out. Yep. Um so <laughs> now I've statement. got two plus ones and a plus two, and then oh, you got two zeros you gotta throw two in there. Two zeros yeah. as well. But I'm thinking about my high stats now. Oh, I see. Yeah, let's I'm see. thinking about my high stats right now. Uh and I'm thinking I'm going to do a I think I'm gonna do my plus to strength. Your plus two? Uh, yeah, my plus two, or though, you know, I think maybe, I, I think I'm going to go with agility, honestly. Really? Yeah. I think we're going to go plus two. Um, I didn't expect it. On agility. Okay. My mental image of your character, your unnamed character. My unnamed character. <laughs> is yeah. shifting in my mind. Yeah. I don't know. Hmm. Man, that's a tough one. That's a really, really tough this one. This comes back to like the, do I want to go with my main casting modifier or do I want to, you know, bolster up other abilities? Yeah, exactly. No, you know, we're going to go, we're going to go with my initial gut reaction, which was a plus to strength, a uh, plus two to strength. Okay. Plus one to agility. Okay. Um, then we're going to go with a, um, we're going to do a plus one. We're going to do a zero to instinct. 
Okay. We're going to do a... Um, do you go with the role play? So knowledge and presence. Uh-huh. So charm, perform, and deceive, recall, analyze, and comprehend. We're going to go with knowledge. I had a feeling. Yeah, we're going with knowledge for that plus one. All right. So my stat spread is agility plus one, strength plus two, finesse negative one, okay. instinct zero, presence zero, and knowledge plus one. I'm interested to see how the pre- you know the uh, finesse and stuff like works out. Yeah, but I think y- your character, uh, your your abilities here, I think that really like paints a picture too. Okay, no, I like that. I think that's a I think that's a good a good spread. Um, my starting evasion is a seven right, right. now. Is yeah. that going to change? Probably, but we'll see. So we're gonna <laughs> go with a seven. So my starting evasion is currently at seven. All right, and that is it for step four. Yeah. So next, we're going to be setting your threshold and hope. Um, each class is going to start with their own damage thresholds detailed on the character sheet under the hit points section. Yep. Okay, so my thresholds uh, for a Seraph, uh, minor starts at 5. Okay. The major starts at 10, and severe starts at 15. About it. So that's a pretty even spread. I'm not sure how the others stack up. Um, but that's pretty We're not worried about those. Yeah, we're not worried about those <laughs> right now. We're a Seraph. 5, 10, and 15. We're good right. on there. Um, we're also getting, uh, what do we do now? You're going to get two hope. We get two hope yep, to start the right game. Right off so the jump. Mark my two hope. Mm-hmm. Do, 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 do. Okay. So I got my two hope and, and that's I got it. my thresholds. That's, that's it for step that five. step. We're oh, off to six. Easy, easy. Now the easy goes away. Unless oh, you have something no. in mind. Oh, okay. Uh, we got to choose your starting weapons. Starting weapons. Yes. Okay. So I don't know exactly what I'm going to choose here. So right. we're going to take a look. Um, so... Leaning more into the the role play of this, mm-hmm. um, I kind of think I would be, I think I would try to be teaching something along sword and board. I'll say, and I'll say, and remember, you can have up to two hands of active weapons. Yeah, um, I think I think one of these hands is definitely going to be um, is going to be a round shield, right? Okay. So I think I want to take a round shield as one of these, right? Right, so that's and that's your secondary up, weapon, correct? Uh, yes, that's a starting secondary weapon. Okay. Yeah. Now I need to do my my primary weapon. Right. This is the question that I'm not really sure what I'm going to go with. Is here. the question are you going physical or magic? So yeah, there's some good options here um, for for magic. I don't I don't know that any of these magic items really fit my theming. Right. Right. Um, so I don't know. arcane gauntlets could be pretty cool. Arcane gauntlets are cool. They are two handed though. Oh yeah. You lose your shield. Yeah. Good I point, good shield. point. So this is automatically going to limit me. So in magic, it's going to limit you to the hollowed axe, the hand runes, mm-hmm. the, uh, short staff, the returning blade, the which wand you've already got that. and the scepter. So I've already got a returning blade yeah. essentially. Uh, it's a finesse weapon anyway, which yeah. oh, negative it's, it's not good so we don't want to touch that. So is that, are we going up physical? So I, none of these, like the hollowed ax is the only thing that's in here. It's a, it's a strength based weapon and it's yeah. a single hand, um, but it's an ax. Right. And you're not, you're not, and I'm not, not picturing, an I'm not, I'm not okay. loving it. I'm not picturing an All ax. Right. Yeah. I'm not picturing an ax. So we're going to go to primary weapons. We're looking at physical here. Yep. Um. So again, this is going to limit our selection. So our selection gets down to a mace which is nice. Okay. Uh, we have a saber. Then we have a short sword, a rapier, and a dagger. Mm-hmm. Oh, and also a crossbow. Um, so, yeah, that's our options right now. I was say, a couple of these are finesse. Yeah, so a couple of these are finesse. So, um, so those are right off. So now we're looking at agility and strength, mm-hmm. right? So we have mace is the only strength one on here. Honestly, it looks like it. So if I want to keep with my main trait, right. mace is the only option. However, a long sword, uh, no, not a long sword, a saber is uh, agility and it's uh, one handed. Yeah. So I could go with yeah. saber here or a short sword, actually. Um, short sword would be a little bit more thematic, right? I think short sword is leaning in towards more like what I would be training. Um, right. But it is an agility weapon now. You're not min maxing with this. Yeah. Right, definitely right. not min maxing. Min maxing now- would be me going with the mace. However, the mace is also. Um, a one d eight instead of a one d ten. I was gonna say, so well, so is so is your saber. Your saber is yeah. also a d eight, but a d ten if you want the short sword. Yeah. Now, something I found interesting, which is there are some. I remember we went over this at one point. There's something that actually benefits to using the short sword. Uh, well, there was the the option of taking the uh the short sword 
um, was I think you're thinking of the pairing option. So short swords uh, pair. If you use it as secondary, you get a plus two to your. Mm, is your that what main. it is? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So short swords and daggers. Yes. Have you're the right, you're paired right. uh, feature, which means if you take dual weapons, right, mm-hmm. your first one gets that plus two. You're right. You're right. Yeah. You're right. But I'm going with a. We're going with a sword and board. So I think I'm going to go with a short sword here. Okay. Uh, it's an agility. It's not a strength. However, when I envision this character and I envision this character training with this royal family mm-hmm. member. Um, he is training him in the use of traditional sword and small shield. Right. And I also uh, see that more as his guard role, you know, like having that shield, having that sword there. Mm -hmm. So kind of filling both roles, like being able to be the protector uh, as well as also being able to dish out a little bit of damage. Yeah, of course. That more traditional look. So I think mace makes more sense stat wise, but in my head, it just looks better as a short sword. Yeah, no, and that's what's, you know... That's what's going to be important here All right. for this character. So, so we are putting down a short sword as our main weapon here. If you are a character, we get in this role a little bit. Mm-hmm. If you're caught in the woods and you're surprised by an assailant, are you more likely to sling a spell or pull out your sword? Ooh, I think I'm, I think I'm more likely to pull out my sword. Okay. Yeah. Yep. I'm going to be more likely to pull the sword and run in. Okay. I have no idea. What painting. you're getting at with here, <laughs> other than no, just painting, painting a picture. picture. Yeah. Well, so so you've got some of your spells that you do use your primary stat. Yeah. So. Ah, okay. So, yeah, you're thinking, yeah. No, mm-hmm. I get where you're coming from. Yeah. But I, I think, yeah, I think I'm probably a little bit more likely to to run up and kind of get in the mix a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Interesting. But we'll see. We'll see how, right. we'll see how it plays out. Oh, I, <laughs> I want to see this happen in game. Where you're like always using the sword, and then eventually you like you're cornered, and you're just like, Wapa! And they're like, Why don't you do that all the time? And you're like, I'm a swordsman. <laughs> because swords. <laughs> all right. Okay. So, yeah. Those are uh, my starting weapons. weapons. Are done. Yeah. So, we're now, going with a next short in sword line. and a round shield. We're down to armor. So, now we're down to armor. Bottom of the same page. So, bottom of the same page. Uh, Which these I are think our you've options. Already We've got leather armor, uh-huh. uh, which is a plus one to evasion because mm-hmm. it has the feature of light. Armor score and it's three. Armor score of three. Yeah. So now you have to remember, no matter what these are, add a two to them, right? Mm. Because my round shield. So right now my base is already two. So if I choose leather, uh, I'm getting a base armor of five. That's respectable. It's not right. bad. If you don't remember what armor does, you can use your armor slots of which you start with uh, three, right? You can tick off one of those to reduce the incoming damage by that, that amount, mm-hmm. right? So if somebody's hitting me with, you know, say nine damage and I have an armor of five, my minor threshold is five, yeah. right? So if I take that nine damage and I take off five and it takes it down to, you know, uh, math for four, <laughs> it's below my, my minor threshold, right? right? So then I'm only taking a stress instead of a wound. Yeah. So that's pretty respectable. Five isn't horrible. No, it's not great though. Uh, we have breastplate armor, which has no feature uh, with an armor score of five. It's your baseline. So that's your baseline. That could give me a seven. That's True. pretty good. It's true. Chain mail armor. So this is a heavy feature. So mm-hmm. minus one to evasion. My evasion is already a seven. Mm-hmm. Not great. Armor score is seven, though. So this is, I was going to say, so this is where it's interesting, right? Yeah. Because that would give you an armor score of nine. Of nine. Of nine. Yes, which is really, really good. And it only makes you one more likely to get one hit. more likely to get hit or you go full on uh-huh. full plate armor which is very heavy which is minus two to evasion and minus one to agility uh-huh. however gives you an armor of nine which for me would be 11 right which is awesome except you also chose an agility based weapon an agility based weapon <laughs> so you yes. are hindering <laughs> so damage. i would definitely be hindering myself by going with full plate armor right. here. So the question is, do I care about the minus one to evasion or do I just go bog standard breastplate armor and stick with an armor score of seven? It, it gets it gets interesting because your evasion is not high. No, my evasion already is not super high. So it is a, a currently a seven. So <laughs> You could raise it by taking leather armor. <laughs> I could, in fact, go up to an eight just by taking leather armor. And that's the cool thing about having the shield, though, is that means my base armor is still five. It's still a five. That's, and you raise your evasion. And I raise my evasion by one. Yeah. So leather armor is actually kind of nice in this situation mm-hmm. because I am... I'm still having that breastplate armor score. Yeah, true. And I'm increasing my invasion, so less likely to hit. And by that same logic, though, you could take the breastplate and have the chainmail armor score. 
<laughs> yes, and have the chainmail without that right. modifier. Um, so I think I know exactly where I'm going to go with Ooh, this. Ooh, I don't. I I'm yeah curious. We're going with uh, chainmail. <laughs> So not what I expected. We're going to take a minus one was, to my evasion. I'm sitting here like, all right, is it leather or will it be breastplate? It could be either of the two. Nope. We're going with chain mail. Okay. Uh, so this is heavy. Uh, we are taking a minus one to our evasion. Mm -hmm. So that makes my evasion now a six. Hey, so it's, it's not nothing. Not nothing, but definitely not great. Sure. <laughs> um, however, my armor is now a nine. Yeah. Which is super good. So nine armor. Yeah, that's pretty respectable. I, I your, like that a lot. Your I mean, just the idea of being able to take off two of those to stop 18 incoming oh, yeah. damage. That's. That's you're already good. walking down the path, though, of now you're going to be really managing these armor slots. Yes. No, I'm definitely going to have to manage armor slots with this yep. build for sure. Um, because, yeah, this is going to be big because I'm probably going to get hit a lot. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll <laughs> probably. see. Probably. Is this a mistake? Only time can tell. <laughs> I think I think it sounds good. But what do I know? I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> so, yeah, that's our armor. So we're going with chain mail. So minus one to my evasion, which we already did, and yep. brings my armor up to nine. All right. I like it. Next down the character sheet, we're going to be choosing your starting inventory. You're going to be All taking right. the starting inventory for your class as listed on your character guide. That's easy peasy. Okay. And then you're going to record those items on your inventory sheet. That's All it. right. So inventory. Uh, this is what I'm getting. So I get a torch. Bingo. 50 foot of rope. Basic supplies and a handful of gold. Handful of gold. That's yep. respectable. All right, now I get to choose either a minor health potion or a minor stamina potion. Mm -hmm. That's one d four each, right? One, yep, one d four each. I am gonna go with the health potion. Yeah, yeah. I'm wondering. So a lot, a lot of people's first character. My assumption is that a lot of people are gonna go with the health potion, really? not knowing truly what a stamina potion can do. This is the first time you played Daggerheart. What is stress to you? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I you guess that, I mean? that's the idea of what is stress to you. Right. What I don't do you think know. health keeps me alive. Health keeps you alive. If I was playing a druid, it'd be stamina potion, no doubt. Right. Right? Because stress is your main driver for transformation, mm -hmm. right? If I was playing a character where more stress meant more mobility, I would yeah. probably take stamina. If I had taken wing, sen wing sentinel, I would have taken a stamina potion. Yeah, I would take stamina. the stamina potion, yeah. Hmm. Because you're marking that stress for flight. So that's one right. more flight engine. Yeah. Right? Sure. But for, for my current build, I think that the health potion is where to go. Probably going to get hit. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I'm definitely going to get hit. Um, I'm most likely, with this good armor, not going to be you know marking stress here. I'm going to be marking wounds, if anything. Yeah. So we're going to take the health potion. Yeah, fair enough. The other thing is uh, is either a, a bundle of offerings or a sigil of your god. Interesting. So, Which way are you going? I am going to take, uh, I'm going to take a sigil of okay. my God. Yeah. I'm going to take a sigil of my God. What does that sigil look like? I'm not sure yet. Because <laughs> it's like you read my mind. I don't know my God yet. You're going to figure it out. We're going to, we're going to figure it out. <laughs> so sigil in the back of my mind, we're going to have to come back to that. Um, as soon as we name this God, then we'll come up with a sigil of what it looks like. Sure, absolutely. And that's it for your inventory. You know, you knock all that down, and then we got to look at the domain decks. I know this is what you're looking forward to. Ooh, domain decks. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so domain deck. Let's pull out our rest of our cards here. So for Seraph, I was our... say which two domains? Did yeah. So serif... our Seraph is split between Splendor mm -hmm. and Valor. So those are the two domain decks that we choose from here. Right. Um, so Splendor uh, is the one we'll go through first. So Splendor is, uh, I guess, the one that I would say is the more healery side of things, cleric -y side of things. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have six domain cards here, three for Splendor uh, and three for Valor. We're going to go through those real quick, and then we'll decide which ones we're yep. going to go with. Because we're only going to get, you're only picking two I'm total. I'm waiting to pick two total. Between all yes. six cards. And I don't know where I'm going yet. <clears throat> so... Splendor. We the first one we have is uh, reassurance. So once per short rest after an ally attempts an action roll, but before the consequences take place, you may offer assistance with words of support. When you do, they may re-roll their dice. They must accept this new roll. That is a. Uh, I'm putting that one towards the top. 
Really? I Already? Like that. I the like jump. that right off the jump. We're going to set that one. I'm stacking them in no, front no, of, of me, uh, the cards, uh, so yeah. that I can kind of come back to them. So I'm going to be ranking them as I read them. <laughs> the next one is Bolt Beacon. Uh, make a spell cast roll against the target within far range. On a success, spend a hope to send a bolt of shimmering light towards them. Treat it like a ranged weapon dealing um, 1d8 magic damage that makes them glow brightly and become temporarily vulnerable. That's really good. That's very good. Also considering I have no range right now. I am straight <laughs> up in your face. Um, so I, I think that one's tier two, not tier one. So yeah. it, it's it's a it's a it's an option. Next one we have is mending touch. Uh, you lay your hands upon a creature and channel healing magic to help close their wounds. Uh, when you make a uh, when you take a few minutes to focus on that person you're helping, spend two hope and heal two hit point. Um or a heal a hit point or a stress. That's really, really good. Is an out of combat healing? Yeah. So this mm-hmm. is an uh, out of combat. Yeah. Uh, and then the second ability for this is once for a long rest, when you spend uh, this time healing, um, you learn, you learning something new about them and you reveal something about yourself. The two hope you spend heals two hit points or two stress instead. So this kind of has, some interesting role play to it. I was going to say the role play. I, I'm, I'm waiting on the role play bit to this hook you. This is the role play like, bit. Yeah. I get I, to benefit more. If I role play. If I role play. If I role play, I get to heal you more. You're rewarded. So it's base is just one hit point or one stress. But if I role play, it's two hit points or two stress. That is amazing. That's going to the top. <laughs> That's going to the top. Okay. So that's it for our Splendor cards. Now we have our Valor cards. So I'm guessing these are probably going to heal more into the warrior aspect of this. Sure. Um, so we've got uh, Bare Bones. Uh, while this card is in your loadout, if you choose to not wear armor, your armor score is equal to 3 plus double your strength trait. Unfortunate that you already wow. took some armor. Yeah, I already <laughs> took some armor. So this is going to be useless. But this is a, kind of a, a, a Seraph Monk build card. Oh, yeah. I like that. It's going cards, to the bottom. The cards that could have been. It's going to the bottom. Uh, the next one is uh, I am your shield. I like the sound of this one. It sounds right? wonderful. This yeah. sounds very thematic right. for me. Um, when an ally very close to you is going to take damage, you may mark a stress to stand in its way and take Ooh. the damage instead. Reduce the damage by a value equal to your strength trait, which I have a bonus in, which yes. is really good. You may also reduce the damage by spending armor slots. You can use your armor slots to protect someone. Thematically, this one lines right up. Well, I mean, so you're going to be taking the damage instead. So it makes sense that you'd be able to use your armor. Yeah. So, but you've got what? Plus two, plus your nine? Yeah. Plus your armor. the nine, yeah. So you're looking at, if you do use your armor, subtracting 11 from any incoming damage, and you stop your friend from taking it. Yeah. Pretty good. That is right up there with like my whole theming of this build. Mm-hmm. So that one's going to the top of the list. We got three cards up there that I got to choose through Right. Now. Uh, next thing we have is forceful push. Uh, when you make a successful melee attack, you can push the target out of melee range and spend hope to make them temporarily vulnerable. On a success with hope, add an additional 1d6 to your damage dice on this attack. So that's just a really cool ability. I was going to say, I really, really like this. You're not going to pick this one, right? I'm not going to pick this yeah. one, no. <laughs> um, I like this. This is really, really cool. Awesome. Um, if you were your monk, that's awesome. Or just if you're in the Guardian, because the Guardian shares the Valor deck, right? Right. So this is a, a very warrior ability. Like this, this is a really cool ability. Um, it's not going to get used here. Uh, I'm not going to choose that. So my choices here, I have mending touch in mm-hmm. the, in the splendor. And then I have reassurance in the splendor and I have, I am your shield in valor. So mending touch is the healing and role play card. Yes. We're taking it. hundred percent. hundred percent. Healing yep. and role play. The, that's perfect. If it was, I was going to say, how else would you even change this? But if, okay, if it didn't have the role play element, would you have taken it? Oh, that's a really good question. I, maybe not. Maybe right? not. I think it's a, it's a good healing. Um, it's a healing. It's a it's healing. Yeah. Healing. I really, I really like the role play aspect of yeah. this. Like learning a fact about somebody and then telling them a fact about you just sounds fun. I wonder how many random inconsequential. Facts oh, there's going to be brought up so many table. facts that I bring up at this table. <laughs> there's so many. All right, so now we have one more. I only get to choose one more. And I have Reassurance here, which is the the one that basically is kind of like um, 
well, bardic inspiration almost. Yeah. No, <laughs> so, on future level ups, you could always dip back down and grab one of these. Yeah, I could. Really yeah. Uh, so this one is the one where after somebody makes an uh, an action roll, I can like you know yell words of support, and I can be all like, "Hey, good on you!" Or uh, "You can do it!" Yeah, right, I believe right. in you. <laughs> and then they get to re-roll, which is really cool. That's oh, it's, super it's neat, super thematic, and kind of fun. Um, also, uh, as a side note, has a zero. I was actually so stress. I was cost. looking down at your cards. Yeah. And I saw the other two had a one. The other one. two have a one. I couldn't see that card because you're holding yeah. it. I was wondering. Reassurance has a zero stress cost, which doesn't mean anything now. No, that's future planning. But <laughs> in the future, could yeah. easily be swapped out of your vault into your deck at no cost. At any time. At any just... time. So that's a good one. But then we have I Am Your Shield, which is the one where you get to jump in front and take the damage. I have to take this. I had a feeling. Because it just goes along with my character so well. From it, a role-playing aspect, yep. a protector is just what I am. So It makes your build make sense, too. We're going with that. So mm-hmm. we're going with I am your shield, which I have a shield, yay, and mending touch. So we're taking one from each of my domains. Mm. So we'll balance. see if he regrets that later. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll take one from each of the domains. Okay. Cool. So you have dove into your domains and... Oh no! I think I had you skip something earlier. <gasps> you did. Whoops! Back you to didn't. number nine. <laughs> it shows my description. You know what's funny is I was looking at what's next, and I'm like, yeah, description's next. It's right after inventory. I mean, it's close Wait enough. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we're professionals. Before we did the domains, we were supposed to choose my description, which is the part I've been looking forward to the most, and I skipped it. And you skipped it. I was just like, ah, it's never gonna live up to the hype. It's never gonna. It's be not gonna live up to the hype. I gotta. I, I gotta skip it. All right. So let's go back to description. Oh, thank you. So um, (laughs) make your choice from the available options on your character guide or create your own. This will help you start your build. So this is my description of my character. So he is a clank. Uh, He is humanoid, which I haven't gotten to. Um, Thank you. This is all all the the things are making sense. (laughs) Yep, He's humanoid. Uh, So when you go down the the descriptions, um, they give you some options here. So you they go in order with clothes, eyes, body, color and attitude, which I love that they do this. Yeah. So they give you some ideas on kind of like, you know, what. Here's some suggestions. Yeah. You don't, you don't have, have to use, to use any them. of these. No, you, you don't could have to be crab like. Yeah. <laughs> so clothes um, right off the jump. Uh, I'm not going to actually have any like clothes. Are you on. naked? No, I'm not naked, okay. but I don't have any clothes on. Um, so is your armor part of your. Because my armor is going to be part of my being. OK. Right. So, so I'm going to I'm going to try and describe my clank. To Please you. do. I'll close he, my eyes. He is humanoid. Um, he is uh, six foot tall. Okay. He is, uh, instead of having clothes, he has his armor are essentially plates that exist on his body as almost like, um, like that make up like his mm-hmm. outer shell is okay. the best way. You now they find. actually kind of like stick up off. So here's the thing. So I imagine like, you know, when you say, okay, I'm going to doff my armor, right? You say right. you're going to take off your stuff. So doffing an armor for... For my character mm-hmm. would look vastly different. So, like if I was gonna doff my breastplate, I imagine <laughs> my breastplate would actually kind of shift forward mm-hmm. and off of my body, and then I could then remove it like a plate, like an actual plate. So, is this and underneath it uh-huh. are like little armatures, right, that are attached to the inside of it. Same thing with okay. the ones on my like forearms and everything like that. All right. these plates. Are all these armor plates are essentially like plates, like active plates. They're add-ons. Like, yeah, they're like add-ons. Yeah. So if I were to doff my armor, yeah. I would probably look like the Terminator. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> After all the flesh has been ripped off of it. Yeah, yeah. So like a nice skinny, like robotic feature with tons of little arms all over it that are Gross. made for mounting all these armor plates. Yeah. Nice. Do, uh, do they like like kind of tuck away, or are they just like? They would just kind of like, be like little T-Rex arms. Yeah, yeah. Okay, all over there. my body. Yeah. <laughs> you got to like line it up and click. <laughs> yeah. And then they, they, no, they reach out and they, yeah. they grab it. Yeah. They reach out and they grab it. Yeah. So Cute. yeah, uh, I imagine that's kind of what I look like. Okay. So it's slightly terrifying. Um, no, it's great. But yeah. And then all these plates are like, you know, like a plate that's got chain mail, like hanging off of it. Cause I'm wearing chain mail. Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, so yeah. Mm-hmm. Like all these plates covered in chain mail when I'm wearing it. Some little arms. Like- so I don't actually have clothes i have all these plates all over my body covered in little arms 
Um, so eyes, um, they're going to be kind of like uh, soulless. No, they're they're there. <laughs> I don't have uh, wouldn't have irises, so to speak. They would just kind of be like a like a pale, probably I don't know. I'm thinking like a pale, cool light. I was gonna say, is it just a light? Yeah, just a okay. light, like a pale, cool light behind the okay. orbs of the eyes itself. But so no, you can like, go full Terminator. No, no, not okay. full Terminator. Not no. yet. Wait till he gets angry. Um, <laughs> I am, you know, obviously all metal. Like I'm going with the yeah. metal thing. We're not okay, going with so like no clay, clay or and... wood or anything okay. like that. Yeah, we're all metal because I am essentially like a walking, talking suit of armor, essentially. Um, animated armor. Yep. I have a, uh, this isn't in my character description on here because it goes to eyes next. We already covered eyes, but they don't talk anything about my face. Mm -hmm. But uh, my face is going to have a nice, um, essentially flat, uh, almost stamped metal handlebar mustache. (laughs) (laughs) They made you. (laughs) Someone made this choice. Yes. Yes. Was it the mother or the father? Yeah, we'll never know. We were, we, they were commissioned, right? He was commissioned. <laughs> right. So, yeah. He's spec. got a nice handlebar mustache that is uh, stamped like gold, right? <laughs> it's like a gold leaf stamped okay. mustache. Yeah. Um, you've already known my body. It's, uh, you know, it's gross. Gross, I guess you say. <laughs> Metal. Uh, as far as color is considered, it's your standard, like, um, chain mail silver but like nicely polished with like gold accents well, it's not like nickel you're gonna like turn green after no a while. no it's okay. it's silver and like i said gold is like one of my main accent colors so like all okay. those plates right they yeah. probably have like a gold uh inlay like around the border of each okay. of the plates almost so and i have like, like filigree and stuff yep, yeah then? exactly okay. yeah, like Jeez, you're so fancy because i'm royalty right yeah. like i was made for a royal family so right. I'm, I'm looking the part Love um it. do you have like the insignia of the family Crest yes, or something. Yeah, yeah. The the family crest will be will be like right there, kind of like on my main chest piece. Do you yeah. already know what it looks like? So I have a couple of different ideas okay. on the royal family crest, um, but I'm not exactly sure which yeah, one you don't I'm have to commit. go with. Um, but yeah, I have some ideas on okay. this one. Yeah, um, attitude is uh, this is interesting. So they the attitudes the suggestions they give you are monk, uh, evangelist, a doctor, an angel, and a priest. Um, These are vastly different from one another. <laughs> vastly, vastly different. You a monk or an angel? <laughs> yeah, his attitude is um, he is not going to be any of these descriptors. He's going to be okay. more of a of a teacher, mm-hmm. and he kind of likes to almost emulate like royalty to a point, like where he. All right, could you blame him? Yeah, I mean, like that's the, the what he grew up in. Yeah. But he's kind of like he has this idea um, that he wants to be um, like a hero, a protector. Okay, so that's what he is. Like he is, he thinks very highly of of service and duty and taking care of those his charges, mm-hmm. basically. So I have very so nebulous, many questions. <laughs> very nebulous, but overall a happy person, right? right. Um, and and devout. Okay. Yeah. So that is the general overall description of him. And if you were to uh, see him, like he would probably give you a, a very deep bow, right? A very cordial, deep bow. Um, but it Mustache would be dash hanging low. It would be a bow that is unnatural, right? Because essentially, you know, like his whole waist would just kind of disconnect. He would lift up about an inch ah! and then just move forward completely <laughs> and then completely bend over at a right angle. <laughs> So ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> Should have known when you were going to be <laughs> clank. He's a clank. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. You're right. So that's your description. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we did domain. <laughs> so now we're at number 11, which is uh, your background questions. Oh, background questions. Now, are you even going to follow the prompts at this point? Or are you just, you've already got this figured out? We've got some, we've got some interesting uh, prompts in here. Mm-hmm. Um. So let's go ahead and read through these and we'll we'll see what we go here. So Seraph is obviously very God-driven class or like a faith-driven class, right? And the very first thing we have in here is, uh, who is your God you've devoted yourself to? And what incredible feat did they perform for you in a moment of desperation that made you indebted to them? So this is interesting because this is almost like, it feels almost 5e (laughs) warlock-y. Well, so... (laughs) So... uh, Example then, right? Uh, do not use it, of course. Whatever. The 
this could just come into play with a simple thing of like you and your charger under attack of some other outside force. The family's been killed. It's just you protecting this child and a, you know, deity intervenes and saves you and saves this youngster. And now you've devoted your life to not only protecting this charge, but also to giving back to this deity. So these things could definitely work out in, in favor of something like a seraph. Yeah. This is so, so I already kind of have, uh, you said warlock. Like, why specifically? Well, no, because it's like you know they did something for you, and now you're indebted to them. I don't right? know if so it's. it's I don't know like, if it's, it's supposed to be like a a patron, but it like feels patrony, right? Because they're all like, "Hey, I'll give you these powers." I feel like I'm gonna make it. What you got? You're indebted I, to me now. You're mine now. I feel like this is more of you a personal <laughs> debt versus you like like they they're asking for a little interest. You know, I think that you're like I feel like I owe you something, and they're like. No, it's nothing to me. Of course, you know, it's just, you're you welcome, child. And you're like, no, no, I must give back. All right. But I, I'll take it as you will. We're going to shoot this. We can have a warlock. We're going to shoot <laughs> this. Yeah, it's a warlock. <laughs> no, we're going to we're gonna make this up on the spot. Yeah. Uh, who is a god you devoted yourself to and what incredible feat I can write this down <laughs> for you uh, in uh, a moment of desperation that made you indebted to them? Yeah, who? Because I got to I got to build this out. All right. Um. We're going to name this god Vara, V-A-R-A. Okay. That's already um, going to be spelled it wrong. <laughs> Vara is the god. Um, an incredible feat did they perform for you in a moment of desperation. So we've gone back with this whole, like, I want to be a protector, right? And I yeah. want to protect, and I'm also training somebody. You protect, so we're going to say, um, we're going to say as part of this royal's training, which I don't even know if this is like a prince or a princess. I'm not sure yet. Um, mm -hmm. As part of their training, um, the great hunt. So Ooh, when they when they get sounds... to a certain age, we go out into this great forest that's part of the kingdom. This sounds like it's straight up taken right out of Vox Machina. And uh, <laughs> we have to go. Um, they have to. They have to solo hunt a. Uh, what is it? What would it be? What it, like a boar, an elk? This is just the gray hunt from Vox Machina. <laughs> I don't remember the gray hunt. It's the Percy's family. This is the thing they do. <laughs> You oh really? Go out and solo hunt and like solo a great hunt? beast. Like a great beast. What did they hunt? Just whatever. Oh, just it's, anything. It's like a thing at the time. It's I don't remember one hundred percent, but I think it's like just a given monster at the time or something. Oh, well, isn't a monster? This is like a, a like, pig. Like no, like Dinner. so like hunting is big in the family. I guess so okay. like they have like a bunch of uh, taxidermy animals. This is like your first the... time hunting alone. Yes, yeah, it's okay. your first time hunting alone, basically. Um, but it's a big. Thing, right so they make a big thing out if you're going to go off on your own with sure. just your your retinue essentially yeah, right like ash going out into the world with nothing but an electric mouse um, but they've, they've got me mm -hmm. though we go out let's say it's an elk right so they have you with them yeah they have me with them so not yeah. alone. well i'm an attendant so yeah. yeah i'm like more like an you're, attendant you're plan b yeah i'm not i'm just supposed to be there to make sure they don't right. get killed by this Do, thing, right? does this happen throughout the family like are they are any all children always given like an attendant like this yes yeah they all have an attendant yeah does this family have other clanks is it like one per child they uh or are you in charge of multiple no so here's an idea yeah no so we'll make this um they only have the one child mm -hmm. right um, they had a child previously, but the child was killed. Dun, dun, dun. The attendant was uh, human. Oh. They blamed the attendant because okay. of their human nature, which is why they had me created. Okay. Because they figured if they created something, less likely to fail them. Right. And this child would thrive. Now, did this attendant fail or was the attendant the reason for the death? Oh, he failed. Okay. Yeah. He failed. That attendant so it wasn't failed. intentional. No, it wasn't intentional. Okay. Yeah, it wasn't intentional. Um, it was probably because the kingdom was attacked, right? Oh, now, no. What did you say? The, thing, <laughs> the kingdom was attacked. Yeah, yeah. Um, by assassins. The uh, the attendant failed to protect the the young prince at that time. Okay. And uh, the uh, the prince was killed. The attendant was uh, thrown in a dungeon. Never oh, heard from what again. What was the uh, prince's name? Uh, that <laughs> prince that died? Yeah. Um, Your ooh. sibling. That uh, or their sibling? No, that's not my sibling. Yeah, no, just one of the same. Um, it was Derek. Derek. Yeah, young Derek. Der young Derek. Yeah, Prince. Okay. So they created me, right? To because uh, I wasn't going to fail because I was a creation. Of course. So why would you know the fault of uh of the the stars, the mortal mind? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So okay, back to the hunt. They have to go hunt an elk. <laughs> Writing so much backstory here. <laughs> That's what it's for. <laughs> we uh we go back to the hunt. Yes. 
Um, and it's a giant elk. Um, Ooh. The elk, he, uh, this prince, eh, make it a princess. It's a princess this time. Okay. So uh, she, um, Layla. I thought it was going to be Zelda. Uh, Layla um, goes to take down this elk. She finds an elk that is of suitable size that looks, you know, prestigious or pretty whatever. Big. Yeah, pretty big. Yeah. Um, she goes to take a shot. Um, but as she does, uh, birds fly up, distracts her momentarily. Ah! The shot goes wide, yeah. hits the elk in the hind legs. Oh no! Uh, and the elk just charges her instead. Yeah, like gonna kill her. They don't right? even feel pain back there. Coming straight at her, and She's I enraged. dive in front. Mm-hmm. And you take have an ability the for that. <laughs> force. Yeah, I am your shield. <laughs> I am your shield. I use my <laughs> my valor ability here right. to jump in front of uh, um, Layla and take the hit from the elk. So the elk just tears me apart. Wow, that's a lot of damage. Um, like he hits me and just like flattens me, and I am just completely disabled. Uh, and as I'm laying on the ground, the light is fading from my eyes. I'm starting to go to the great shutdown. That's what they call it <laughs> the when Crank's The great Crank's shutdown. <laughs> the great shutdown begins to happen. Uh huh. And <laughs> I could feel it coming. Yeah. And uh, as I look up, I see uh, this god approaching me. And. Um, She's wearing like like she looks like a protector, like full plate, um, like this massive beam of light behind her. Like she's just like there's light coming through the forest mm-hmm. from like there's a canopy. There shouldn't be light shining this brightly on this being. But there is. But there is. And as this elk is walking towards Layla, it's about to kill her. It's about to maul her. She's like terrified, like running up against the tree. Yeah. The god approaches me, uh, and um. The incredible feat that they perform for me is to stop the great shutdown. <laughs> she she comes walking over to me and she puts her hand out and she tells me that uh, uh, my time is not done and neither is Layla's. And okay. she touches me and immediately I am back like I was never attacked. Oh, yeah. like That's I'm, a mechanic in the game too. <laughs> yeah, I'm back full, full grown, full grown. It you know everything like I'm back back up and then I run across and I'm able to save her from the elk sick and that was the moment of uh, desperation that made me feel indebted to them love it love it and how did your appearance change after taking your oath so after doing this the gold shines slightly brighter I thought you were going to have antlers or something my <laughs> Okay. So the gold shines brighter. Uh, leave brighter. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you went into the forest, a dull <laughs> clank, and you came out. A dull clank. A bright... Yeah. So I wasn't shiny before. I wasn't right. buffed and shiny before. I was kind of dull. Mm-hmm. But after this, I was like buffed and shiny. Yeah. Like the nice gold. You, you feel know, rejuvenated. You look rejuvenated. Rejuvenate. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And fresh new scent, everything. I just fresh feel great. Scent. Got that um, new clank smell. In what strange or unique way do you communicate with your God? Um, my eyes go completely like I'm going into the great shutdown. (laughs) I power down. I go into low power mode. Yeah. Yeah. And in that moment, I'm communicating with my God, but I am completely disabled. Like I turn into a statue. Interesting. I go into power saver mode. mode. Yeah. Yeah. I go into power. Are you aware of your surroundings? Uh, no, you are. I imagine I probably go senseless. Yeah. And I am now able to communicate with my God. Love it. Anytime you want? Um, I can try. Okay. Like, okay. I can go into low power mode. She doesn't and always you respond. you can reach out. Yeah, okay. and I can reach out, but she doesn't always respond. Okay. Thank you for working with me on that. <laughs> You're like, oh, shoot. Every time. Every my time, God Jim, always listens to they're me. They're always there. And grants me three wishes, except bringing anybody from, from the dead. Can't fall <laughs> they, in love. They can't fall in love. <laughs> and I can't wish for more wishes. But anything else, the God is bound to me. <laughs> And I called it. <laughs> so yeah, no. Dang, you did it in character creation. What am I? What am I supposed to do? All right, so that's my background questions. Yeah, and I'm using all the ones from the sheet. I decided not to go off the rails here too far, <laughs> except for this old great yeah, god. It's wonderful. And, <laughs> no, other, other than everything. <laughs> other than everything. Yeah, we're we're gonna use the background questions. Oh my goodness! All right, all right. What do we got? We're getting real close to actually spending more time making a character than we done the episodes, okay. which is fine. I'm having a great time. Uh, next, we got to generate your experiences, which Ooh. 
Yes. To, okay. to sum that up, the description is you have to use all of the choices and backstory you've made about your character so far to generate two experiences, a set of narrative words or phrases that represent the kinds of things that you've learned um, or become on your journey so far. Assign one plus two value and one plus one value for you know each of these. One's getting a one, one's getting a two. Okay. And these are things that you can bring up in game as your phrase like, hey, this reminds me of that thing. Uh, that's a plus two. Can can I uh, spend a hope and add a plus two to my thing? I'm like, yeah, that sums it up. Okay. So, uh, so now if you remember, we go back to Clank. Yes. Purposeful design. Decide who you created, uh, who created you, and for what purpose. When you generate your experience as a character creation, choose one that reflects that purpose and add a plus one to it. So I can choose either my plus two and make so it a plus three. So I was gonna three, ask. So yeah. So this or is my either plus a plus one three a plus or a two. plus two and a two. Yeah, so I could either do a 2-2 huh. two, two for an even spread or a 3-1 for a more not-so-balanced spread. So I have, uh, I thought of two. Already. Oh, you already did this. Yeah, I thought of two different Wonderful. experiences here. Which is interesting, considering we just made the background. Yeah, <laughs> but these um, these are interesting. <laughs> There's something. Okay. Uh, so my first one, um, we're going to go with the, the plus two. Uh, and this one is called Fancy Footwork. So okay. this is for this is why you want a decent agility. <laughs> this is for the training, right? So like I'm training with, you know, um, okay. a sword and a shield and I'm training close combat. Okay. Right. So fancy footwork would be that. So that's the idea that like, I do have a little bit of agility. It's not a dump stat. It's a plus yeah. one. Uh, so I do have a little bit of agility to, to move around and be able to maneuver on the battlefield and stay on your feet. Okay. And this is you showing Layla how to do that kind yep. of thing. Okay. Yeah. So that's a plus two. My plus one is uh, <laughs> the stupidest phrase ever. I know what side of my bread the, the buttered on. <laughs> so I know what side my bread is buttered on. Please explain to me how this fits your backstory. <laughs> so this phrase... Is this royalty? Is... Like... So this right here is I... So the idea... Uh, that phrase, the turn of phrase, yeah. I know what side my bread is buttered on, is like that you know, you know about your surroundings and you know what's going on. So the way that I'm wording this is that I also have to teach her things that aren't combat related, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm also Fair. her attendant Fair. or a courtier, right? right? So I need to know stuff about functions. I yeah. need to know about how to act. Um, because she is growing up, like I need to know these things. Use so, the silverware from the outside in. <laughs> yes, I have to know these things because not only am I a guard, I'm also the attendant and courtier for yeah. for her. So I would need to know all this stuff too. So this is a turn of phrase that just says that, like, I kind of know the ins and outs of royal life and what you need to be doing, and just general living and being there to answer a question that she might have about a, a situation. So situational awareness. And, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. So how are you tying your clink back? <laughs> so <laughs> into this. we are going to get a plus one to that. Okay. So fancy folk work is a basic two. And then buttered bread is, uh, is a also bread. a two. Um, because, you know, them creating me as both a, a teacher in combat, yeah. but as well as a teacher in life lessons and how to be. Uh, is also going to be like one of the things that they instilled in me. Right. And because of that, uh, I'm going to add a plus one to it. Okay. So instead of choosing the min max, your experiences, you chose to have an even spread. So it even you spread. Can cover yep. a wider, you know, now. Yeah. Okay. Of experiences. Yep. Love it. And those are my two experiences. Next. The moment we've all been waiting for. Your name and pronouns, sir. <laughs> my name and pronouns. Yes. So, um, Pronouns, um, I guess he would identify as a, a he, him. Okay. Yeah. He thinks of himself is, you know, a he, him. Uh, his name <laughs> is Cornelius Rivetbottom. Terrible. <laughs> no, it's great. <laughs> this is Cornelius Rivetbottom. Rivet bottom rivet bottom. Not yeah, rivet, yeah, yeah. rivet bottom. No, no, no. You're, yeah. not, you're not upset you didn't get to be a rivet. So... You're <laughs> His name was Cornelius. Yeah. But uh, Layla, when she was little, used to make fun of him and call him Rivet Bottom. Because of his booty. Because of his rivets. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that held him together. Sure. And uh, she used to call him affectionately Rivet Bottom. And he uh, adored this term, we'll say. 
and uh, he eventually chose it as his uh, his surname. So he decided so he didn't take to... their name. No, he took his own. He took his given own by the daughter. given by Princess. the daughter. Okay. Yeah, that's what we'll take. Yeah, okay, that's what we'll say. So he he adopted this name as uh, as a badge of honor instead of like the mocking term that it was kind of used when she was younger. Uh, he embraced it. So many questions about as, this character. I want to know more. As Cornelius Rivetbottom. Why are you no longer with this princess? What happened? I know. I want to know. <laughs> There's more, but that's not part of character creation. No, it's not. Unfortunately, though, I want to know <laughs> selfishly. So was that for your name and pronouns? Yeah. No middle name. No, <laughs> no there's no middle name. Just Cornelius Rivet Bottom. Uh, next in our final step here is to create connections with the other players. But Richard, we're missing a crucial element to this. The other players. <laughs> yes. So this is uh, going to be a super fun one. And I'm very excited for this um, to create these connections with other people. Yeah. Uh, especially considering the ridiculousness of my character. Yeah. This is um, just one character. Yeah. This is just we have one another three players yeah. that we're going to do this with. Yeah. I think it'll be faster for them. <laughs> Will it though? Because there's three of them. Yeah, maybe. We'll see. Yeah, it's fair enough either way. But yeah, we're not going to create any connections because obviously we have no other players. Uh -uh. So that's the the last and final thing for Cornelius Rivet Bottom. But imagine that he did. But imagine he made some very deep connections to other people. Not surface level at all. Not surface level at yeah. all. So yeah. That was fun. Thank you for listening to the creation of my clank, Seraf Cornelius. Yeah. And I think he's going to be uh, a very different class and uh, super fun. Yeah. And thank you, Nathan, again for the suggestion. Yeah. Thanks, Nathan. We <laughs> I'm glad I got to share Cornelius with you because otherwise, I don't know when I was going to talk about Cornelius. And, we would have know. just done a like, a, hey, we played a game of Daggerheart. And this is how it went. He's were the characters. So yeah. we'll probably still do one of those. Yeah. But now you have a little bit of background on Cornelius. And exactly. All the fun Some stuff stakes, that he did. So when, you know, Cornelius meets his inevitable demise. Hey. We'll hurt more. Oh, sorry. Oh, I'm skipping ahead. That already happened once, the Great Shutdown. He no. it narrowly. <laughs> There's enough. only one Great Shutdown. If you go into it commonly now, <laughs> it's, it's a subtle shutdown. A slight shutdown. <laughs> slight shutdown. Uh, but yeah, if you uh, listen on YouTube, I appreciate all of you, the subs lately, and the likes and comments and everything. You guys are amazing. It's been super great lately. And legitimately, just appreciate all of you. If you're listening on Spotify or Apple Podcast, thank you so much for the five stars and sub notes there as well. But for now... I've been Tyler. And I've been Richard. And we've been True, True Strike. Strike. Bye. Bye. Hey, adventurers. Thanks again for joining us today. Please be sure to give us a follow on your favorite podcasting platforms and YouTube. If there's any questions you'd like to write into the show, you can hit us up on X, Threads, or Instagram. New episodes release every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern. Thank you for listening to True Strike.